First things first, got the belt of truth. Put on my boots, gotta tell the good news. The armor of God and the shield of faith. Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray. You got the belt of truth. Put on my boots, I gotta tell the good news. The armor of God and the shield of faith. Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray. Put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one. Put on. can stand, stand, stand against every evil plan, plan, plan. Now it's time to be strong, strong, strong. He has won. I put on the full armor of God. Stand strong against the evil one. I put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. I put on the full armor of God. Stand strong against the evil one. I put on The Shield of Faith! Hey, Fred! Oh, hey, Ted! What are you doing? Well, you know how this week the kids are learning all about the armor of God? Yeah! Well, I found a story in the Bible that speaks about a man that used the Shield of Faith. We can't see the Shield of Faith but faith is a huge shield. Faith is trusting and believing in something or someone, even if you can't see it or them. The story can be found in Matthew 8, verse 5 to 13. Would you like to hear it? Yes, please, Fred. Okay, then. One day, Jesus came down the mountain to a nearby city. Crowds gathered from all around to see him. An army captain said, Lord Jesus, my servant is very sick. Please, will you help him? Jesus said, I will go to your house and heal him. The captain replied, You don't need to go to my house. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus was amazed. I have not found anyone whose faith is so strong, he said. Then Jesus said to the captain, Go, your servant is healed. The captain ran home. He was so happy to see his servant well again. Wow, that was amazing. Yes, Ted. The Bible says faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. This man was certain that Jesus could heal his servant so much that he didn't even need to take Jesus to him. When we put on our shield of faith, we are standing strong on the fact that God is always there for us, even though we can't see him. Well, I have faith that God is real because he hears my prayers and he has done so much in my life. That's great, Ted. That's what the shield of faith is all about. Let's say bye to the kids. Bye. Bye. The Belt of Truth. Wear the belt of truth to be truthful and remember the truth. We know about God, we can know the truth by reading the Bible. We'll develop a conscience 
and we can learn from other believers who believe in the same thing as us. The children have lots of questions to ask. The answers can be found in the Bible. You okay, Livia? Sit down. Mom, did God love everyone? My friend said he doesn't. Of course he does. You know, God so loved the world, he gave his only son. This is found in John 3.16. This means that God loved everyone so much, he sent him to die for us. Does that explain everything, Olivia? Yes. Well, that's good. Mom? Yeah? My friend took a pencil from the teacher's desk without asking. Really? Yeah. I told it was wrong, definitely. That's good. Yeah, but he said this, that sometimes stealing's okay. Is it okay to steal? Stealing is wrong all the time. We should never take something that is not ours. The Bible says, thou shalt not steal. It's one of the 10 most important things that God asks us to do. Let's find it together. Yeah, actually we should. Mom, Mom. Yes, Olivia. My friend said that God never created the whole world. Is that true? That's not true. God did create the world. He made it in six days and on the seventh day he rested. We can find the story in the book of Genesis. Shall we have a look? Yeah. Wear the belt of truth to be truthful and remember the truth. We know about God. We can know the truth by reading the Bible. Bye. 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 The Helmet of Salvation. need some templates printed on card, some PVA glue, a glue stick, some coloured tissue paper. I've chosen red and blue but you don't have to use those colours. Some foil paper. You don't have to use foil though, it's just an option. Some scissors, some felted pens and a stapler. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is cut out our template. The link for the template is in the description box of this video. Now you don't have to use this template. You could draw and decorate your own helmet design and then add the band for the head like I do later on in the video. Next, you could decorate your side pieces. I've used a yellow pen and I'm also going to use some blue tissue paper for the inside. Now you don't have to use tissue paper, you could just colour it in or decorate it with any kind of craft pieces that you like. So next, get a glue stick and stick all of your tissue paper pieces into the centre of your side pieces. Voila! Now stick your foil down to the front section of the helmet. Oh, I almost forgot. Colour in the square at the top first. Once you've done that, stick the foil down, turn the card over and then cut it out. But please get an adult to help you as it can get really tricky trying to cut around where you coloured. What we're going to do next is decorate this part. Let's get our felted pen and colour around the edges. Then. Get some more tissue paper and stick it down in the middle. And there you go. Now for this next part, we're going to use red tissue paper. So stick it down, turn it over and cut it out. So by now, you should have most of your pieces ready. The next thing that we're going to do is colour in the word salvation. Now, a helmet is very important because it protects your head. When you ride a bike or a scooter, you wear a helmet and even soldiers at war wear helmets. One of the most important pieces of our spiritual armour is the helmet of salvation. Salvation is when Jesus comes into our lives and takes away our sins 
and it's represented as a helmet because it protects our thinking. Sometimes when we sin, the devil will try to convince us that God doesn't love us anymore and that we have lost, but the Bible says that there is nothing that can separate us from God's love. This means that when we put on the helmet of salvation, we are winners through Christ. Because we have Jesus, we can win against sin. So now that we have all of our pieces, we're going to put them all together. So now this is where our strips of paper are going to come in handy. So what we're going to do first is get the stapler and staple two strips of paper together. Put the band around the head and then turn the helmet piece the other way round so that you can mark where you're going to join the helmet to the band. Using the markings as a guide, staple the band to the helmet. Next, glue on the feather piece. Now for this piece, you're going to need to use a stapler. Please get help with this because it can be very tricky. Notice how the staples are actually facing inside out. This is so that they don't get caught on your head when you're wearing it. Staple the side pieces also using the same method. And there you go. Add your salvation piece. I'm going to use PVA glue for this. Leave it to dry. And there you have it. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Even though you can't see it, there's a spiritual battle taking place between God and the devil over the hearts of each person on earth. Since the beginning of time, God has been fighting for people to know the truth. There was a time when Jesus himself needed to remember what was true to be able to defeat the enemy. One day, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert. He was out there for 40 days and 40 nights without anything to eat. You can probably imagine that Jesus was very hungry. The devil came to Jesus while he was in the desert and tried to tempt him three different times. The first time, the devil could tell that Jesus was hungry, so he tried to use that against Jesus. He said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus quoted from the scriptures and said, It is not just bread that keeps people alive. Their lives depend on what God says. Then the devil took Jesus to the top of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off, because the scriptures say, God will command his angels to help you, and their hands will catch you, so that you will not hit your foot on a rock. But Jesus saw that the devil was trying to use the scriptures against him. So Jesus said, The scriptures also say that you should never test God. Finally, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. The devil said, If you bow down and worship me, I will give you all of this. But Jesus had had enough. He told the devil, Get away from me, Satan. The scriptures say to worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Because Jesus used God's word, he was able to defend himself when he was tempted. In the same way, the enemy will engage us in battle by tempting us to do what is wrong. When we feel like making fun of someone, lying, or doing something that we know is not what God says is best, we can use the sword of the Spirit to defend ourselves against that temptation. We can hold up the sword of the Spirit. The best plate of righteousness. God wants us to put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our heart. Righteousness means to be right with God. And to be right with God means that we need to know the truth about him and what Jesus did for us. We all sin and without God, we can never be righteous. But with God, we can be right with him. God can give you a clean heart. We can protect our hearts by being honest with God when we do something wrong. 
It's important that we confess even the sins that we don't realize that we do. If we pray to Jesus every day and tell him that we're sorry for the things that we've done wrong, he will forgive us. Why don't you say this prayer with me? Say, Lord, please forgive me of all of my sins and please forgive me for the ones that I don't even know I did. Help me to always protect my heart and to never hide it from you. Thank you for loving me and for forgiving me. Jesus, please help me to make the right choices. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wow, Fred! That episode was fantastic. Yes, Ted, we learned all about the armor of God. Ah. Oh. Yeah, but I feel we're missing something. Missing something? The feet! We're missing the feet! The feet? What do you mean the feet? The feet fitted with the gospel of peace. Oh, the feet. I remember. Well, kids, if you want to learn all about the last part of the armor of God, tune in on Sunday the 30th of August for our back to school special, where we'll learn all about the feet fitted with the gospel of peace. Oh wow, that sounds exciting. It will be. But for now, we hope that you have a lovely summer. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you on the, on the 30th, 30th of, of August. August. What do we say to the children, Naomi? Bye. 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 Long ago, God sent his prophet Samuel to find the future king of the Israelites. Samuel, go to Jesse's house in Bethlehem. There you will find the new king over all Israel. Hmm, I wonder who that is. My sons, come into the house. There is a guest here to see you. Huh? Oh. David, you stay there and look after the sheep. We're going inside. Jesse, uh, you say you have eight sons? Yes, and they are such fine young men. Here they come. <laughs> oh! God's chosen one. No, Samuel. You are thinking too much about what he looks like. You must look inside. You must look at his heart. Hmm. Wait. There are only seven here. Don't you have another son? Yes, but he is the youngest and the smallest. See him off there guarding the sheep? Him? No, it couldn't be him. Could it? Thank you. I will leave now. You must look at his heart. What's your name, son? David. 
God has told me that you will be the new king of Israel someday. God is my friend. He helps me save my sheep. Yes. And one day, I hope you save us all. Goodbye, David. Goodbye. And God bless. David's three older brothers were called away. David, come over here and pray with me as I bless the men of the family for battle. To go fight for the people of Israel. Eliab, Abinadab, Shammah, may the Lord bless you and keep you and bring you safely home for battle. But Father, what, son? You didn't bless me. I want to fight for Israel. Hmm. Don't worry about us, Father. We're old enough. And strong enough. We can hardly wait to fight the enemy of God's chosen people, the evil Philistines. We'll win and be home before you know it, David. Everybody, wait! Don't leave without me. Please, please let me go, Father. I want to fight for the people of Israel, too. <laughs> What's so funny? I may be small, but I'm brave. Why, just the other day, I saved our whole flock of sheep from a huge, ferocious lion. I hit him with a stone from my sling ah, and knocked him clean out. Want to see how good I'm getting? Whoa! No, David, not now. First, I had to sock that lion right on his nose. Bang! And then I shook that rascal by his whiskers. And then I pulled his jaws apart and rescued our little lamb. And then... And then... I'm not afraid of those Philistines. Oh. So please, Father, please let me go fight too. Whoa! <laughs> Guarding sheep isn't exactly the same as fighting the big bad Philistines, little David. Stay home, little brother. Father needs your help to watch over the sheep. And Father can watch over you. Grow up, little lamb. You may be brave enough to fight, but you're just too little. Abinadab, Shama, time to go. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. 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 Bye. Goodbye. Someday I'll go to battle for the people of Israel, Father. Someday. Now the two great armies met for war in the middle of a vast valley. King Saul led the army of Israelites. But the enemy, the Philistines, had a giant on their side. The giant came marching across the valley toward the army of the Israelites. His legs were as big as tree trunks, his arms were strong as iron, and his steps made the whole earth tremble. <laughs> I am Goliath, the giant! And all 
of you are nothing but King Saul's little servants. Even if all of you fight me together, you can never beat me! <laughs> so spare yourselves. I dare you choose just one man brave enough to fight. Uh -huh. hmm. Not me. Not me? Uh, not me either. <laughs> <laughs> Just one man! If he beats me, all of my men will be your servants. But if I slay him, all of you shall be our servants forever. Now, who is brave enough to fight a giant? Just step forward. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Every morning and evening for 40 days, Goliath marched to the center of the valley and gave his great battle cry. enough. You are nothing but cowards! He said it. He's right. You bet he's right. Well, what do my brothers think? Could I? I... Whoa. Ooh. No, don't even think about it. I'll try to... Ooh. You're not risking your life for him. Maybe I'll... Neither are you, Eliab. It's not worth it. Not even to marry King Saul's daughter. Oh, but wouldn't it be great? Being rewarded with the princess's hand in marriage for beating the giant? Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Oh, I wish this was over and we could go home to Father in Bethlehem. The King will come up with a plan. You watch. <laughs> Bet I can get five in a row. Remember, never be afraid. David, that was a good shot, son. Did you see that, Father? Maybe now you'll let me go join the army and fight with King Saul and the Israelites. No, son. I told you before. They won't take you. You're too young to be a soldier. And you've got to get some more meat on those bones of yours. But, Father, I'm strong and I can run like a deer. I said no, David. Now do as I ask, and take this food to your brothers. Then hurry home to tell me how they are. 
Now be careful, son. I pray you will bring good news. enough to fight? Are all the Israelites nothing but cowards? Oh, I don't like Shamo, what are you doing? Why are you running away? You'd better run yourself. If you know what's good for you. Watch out, boy! But who is that? It's Goliath, the giant. He's the champion for the Philistines against the people of Israel. But why won't anyone fight back? <laughs> what do you mean? Look at him! He's too strong! He's over ten feet tall! None of us could even lift his spear! But what about King Saul? King Saul will give a rich reward to the man who slays that giant! You'll even let him marry his own daughter! And none of you are brave enough to try? No! Because none of us want to die for no reason! Eliab, why won't you fight? Ab Abinadab, why are you afraid? Shama, are you afraid of the giant too? All the soldiers are afraid, little David. Yes, little brother. Aren't you afraid too? You're too young to be here at all, David. Yes, little brother. Go home and take care of sheep where it's safe. No, I can't. Someone has to fight Goliath. But who? Everyone here is afraid. I'll fight the giant. I'm not afraid. You? Yes. God is stronger than Goliath. And God will help me. Go tell King Saul. I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I have news for King Saul. What news? <laughs> so, there's this Israelite champion, <laughs> who's really a young shepherd boy, <laughs> says he wants to fight for King Saul and the Israelites. <laughs> <laughs> says God will help him fight the giant, <laughs> and he's never even been trained as a soldier. <laughs> well, tell the foolish lad to go home. King Saul is no use for jokes out here on the battlefield. <laughs> Tell the boy. Tell the boy to come here. But sire... Joab, bring the boy here to me. Now. I wonder who he is. I wonder why he's the only one brave enough to fight the giant. He is, I understand. Giant of a man, and I am not. His spear appears to be the size of a small tree, and all I've got is a slingshot. This Philistine is large, but I know who's in charge. I have a giant.
the roaring lion Set the wolves on crying every time And with a little faith I was not afraid to fight was God's Not mine This Philistine is large But I know who's in charge I have a giant like he couldn't fight a flea. Make way for the little giant killer. I don't see any giant killer. I don't see anyone. Neither do I. Silence! Make way for this boy. Huh? huh? I said make way for the shepherd boy. The king wants to see him. Oh, oh yes. yes. Certainly, Certainly commander. commander. Right away, sir. <laughs> Your Majesty, I am... <laughs> Silence! Let the boy speak. Please, sir, don't be afraid of the giant. With God's help, I'll fight him for you. I'll fight Goliath for you and for all of the people of Israel. But how can a boy like you fight Goliath? You can't match him in size or strength or skill, my boy. Why, you've never even been trained for battle. It's true, Your Majesty. I am young and small, but God will make me strong. <laughs> if God saves my sheep, God will save me from this giant. Now let me fight the giant for you and the people of Israel. Yes, little David, and may God be with you. Joab, get my sword and shield. Get my armor. Put them on young David. Huh? Joab, I said dress the boy for battle. Huh? Yes. Yes, your majesty. Well, didn't you hear King Saul? Do as he says! David. God's help is all the armor I need. Please help me, God. Help me fight Goliath the giant for the people of Israel. Can you hear me, Goliath the giant? I am ready to fight. You can fight with sticks and stones? You'll be sorry! 
You fight me with your sharp sword and heavy spear, Goliath, but I fight you in the name of God. chased the Philistines away. The boy killed the giant! Goliath is dead! Where is the boy? Joab, bring him here to me. Little brother! It is you! Our brave baby brother David! Bring the boy here to King Saul! Thank you, my son. Thank God, Your Majesty. And that is how little David beat Goliath the giant with the help of God. This was only one of the many great adventures God had planned for David. David the shepherd boy grew up to become a great king who served God. Throughout David's long and adventurous life, he always remembered the comforting words of God.